Hello, thank you very much for tuning in to this week's read. For this cycle, I guess you would call it, uh, I'm going to use the Awakened Tarot. I haven't used this one in a while, but I do like this deck. Um, I think it was created like a group effort because it's got team, I always mess up the name, R-Y-V-E, so Reeve. And there's uh, myreeve.com at the bottom if you want to check that out. So that way if you like this deck and you want to check it out, feel free to do so. There's that. The oracle cards I'm going to be using are Energy Oracle Cards by Sandra Ann Taylor. Big fan of um, big fan of Sandra. And the website, that's why I got the book out. The websites are, am I on the right one? Yep, there are a bunch of Hay House websites. Feel free to freeze frame and go into any of those you're interested in. Uh, Sandra Ann Taylor, I think there's something on the back here too, so I'll show you that. Feel free to freeze frame and check out any of the information. I think there's a, um, a website at the bottom or there's a Hay House radio link there or something. And the last part is I do use dice. For the Major Arcana, I use a 22-sided dice. I um, use 22 as 0 for the Fool, and then, you know, up to 21 is the World. And then I have a 14-sided dice for the Minor Arcana, and then I use a 4-sided dice to choose the element. And Math Art Fun, I think, is what the website is. If I get that close enough, hopefully you can see it. MathArtFun.com if you want to find the dice. All right, I think we're good with that. Uh, of course, if you'd like a reading from me, shoot me an email, james at gmail.com. This is james, number four, astral at gmail.com. If you're interested in the donation information, that's below, same email. Thank you very much for watching, and now let's go on to your read. Hello, Cancer. Thank you very much for tuning in to this week's read. These readings are valid for whenever you come to them. That being said, what do we have for Cancer. <laughs> Very interesting. Um, I guess we just had to put them all down, didn't we? Okay. So I'm just going to... While there's a lot of good cards in this reading, it's starting off that you're very unhappy. So whatever the subject is, you're not happy with it. You could be feeling like you're completely disconnected from it. You've been left out. Or, you know, you don't know what to do with it. That's where it's starting. Like, whether I like it or not... You got the Three of Swords, the Ten of Swords, and the Nine of Swords grounding the situation, saying that this is definitely, for those of you this is going to hit with, it's the this, this subject you're not happy with. Could be a relationship, a family, friend, co-worker, could be business all, over, all together. Um, there's upswing to it. There's definitely an upswing to it. But I feel like what they're acknowledging right off the bat is like this subject you are not happy with. It could be somebody you're very disappointed in. It's almost like somebody did something and you're just like, either the way they treated you or they didn't think of you, they might not have thought of you. That might be what's upsetting you, just to be fair. So, whatever's going on, this has been something that's affected you for quite a while. Um, you've thought about it a lot. It takes up resident in your residence, takes up real estate in your brain, real estate in your thoughts. You can't stop, stop yourself from thinking about it. Let's just go there. It's almost like you wake up in the middle of the night and maybe it's just like you're thinking about it or it's just before you go to bed and your head's laying in the pillow and you're just like, it's just going through your brain. You're driving to work or wherever you're going and all of a sudden, there it is again. You're thinking about it. It's one of those things, just to be fair. It's one of those things that you're constantly trying to think of a different way to do it. Um, I tend to think of cancer as is not being very happy with change. They don't really like it. But this is actually one of those situations where it's kind of like, I'll change. Whatever you need me to change, I'll change it because I need it to go better. You're open to change, but you're open to purposeful change. Um, purposeful change. You know what I mean? Like, I will change if it really looks like it'll improve this. I'll change if this really looks like it'll move away from where I don't like it. Stuff like, I'll do it. I'll do it if I can get that, and I feel yeah, I'll do it. Um, I feel like you're like I won't even, I won't have any problems. We need to change, even if it's somebody else's idea. If it'll improve this situation, all right, let's do it. Let's do that then. Thing is, change isn't happening in this situation, not currently. 
Okay. Why is it currently happening? That's a good question. Did I put? Yeah, I did put down the oracle cards. I just they're all over the place. They're not in the center just yet, so it's kind of like we're just kind of dealing with what we're dealing with. Um, I feel like you're trying to feel more included with this situation, but it seems like it's splitting off in two different directions. It's like I'm trying to look out for myself as well as others. The uh, Empress card came up on the dice, and when that card's in balance. You look out for others, but you look out for yourself just as much. You're a part of the situation. It's not just about do for others until you can't do anymore. It's do for others and yourself. You're included. Um, selfless giving, it can easily become a toxic thing. Giving in the sense of like, you know, I look out for people, I try to help people, but I'm also looked out for and helped as well. Like there's a, there's a circle effect here. You shouldn't just be giving until you can't stand anymore. People should be giving back. You should look out for yourself as much as you look out for others. I'm just saying. I don't believe in this just like give until you drop situation. I don't. I think that's very unhealthy personally. Um, so, but you're trying to do that. But it's like every time you try to do something for yourself or kind of look out for yourself, I feel like it's being like, like weaponized against you in some way. Take that with a grain of salt. But I do feel like any time you look out for yourself, you try to do a little bit for you. It's almost like, you know, for example, if you're going to plan a big, di a bl big dinner, because uh, I'm a foodie, that's why I go to that, um, and you like, maybe you like Brussels sprouts in a certain way, and other people are like, well, most of us don't like Brussels sprouts. That's okay, y'all don't have to eat them. This is one piece for me. So we're going to have these Brussels sprouts. They're going to be here. You don't like them. You don't eat them. There's a lot of other stuff here too. Just because you don't like that doesn't mean I can't have that. So it's kind of like making it really simple. It's like you're making this big dinner. You want those Brussels sprouts. You're making it anyway or whatever. You can have that. And if other people don't like it, that's kind of – that's. I would kind of pay attention to that because I don't think that's right. Like other people don't like it. It's probably not the only vegetable you're going to have on the table. But if everything else is other, what other people want and other people's favorite things, you should have something you like too. I'm just saying. So moving forward with this situation – Every, it just feels like it's weaponized against me. Every time I try to do for me, it's like it's it's weaponized against me. It's, I keep feeling that. Take up the grain of salt. It's a general read. Um, I also feel like if we're going to use that same analogy, it's kind of like, all right, fine. They don't like the Brussels sprouts. They don't want them at the dinner for whatever reason. It's almost feeling like, all right, I'm having Brussels sprouts by myself. I'm making them and I'm keeping them over to the side for myself. I'm having them in a, on a different day. Um... But it's almost like I feel like any time I do for myself, I'm being left out or I'm being ostracized or I'm not – like it's almost like whenever I try to do something for me, I have to do it all on my own and all by myself and nobody wants to be a part of it. Is this real? It's a great general read. Take it with a grain of salt. I'm just kind of like – I feel like any time I look out for myself or any, anything I want to do something for me, I'm all off by my – on my own. Hmm. Anyway, this isn't good. This doesn't make me feel like I'm a part of the situation. If this is hitting this way, I don't know. There must be another way to look at it because it's like it makes me very uncomfortable. It's kind of like you care about people. It does seem like people care about you, but any currently the energy is anytime you do something for you, it just feels like it's kind of like, oh, my God, cancer, you're so selfish. That's not selfish. That's not selfish. You look out for a lot of people. You should be included in that too. So be careful of that. If somebody is constantly weaponizing Anytime you do something for you, because I keep getting, it's not like you constantly do for you. It's kind of like, it's kind of like if you, if you look at a hundred percent, like a dollar, if you look at a full dollar, 20 cents you keep for you and then 80 cents you help other people with. Meanwhile, it is your dollar. So if you wanted to keep, and a lot of people keep their own dollar and don't help anybody. I feel like that's here too. It's kind of like you have a dollar to spend on other people. We're just making it simple. You keep 20 cents for you and you're using the other 80 cents for everybody else. Other people are keeping their full dollar for themselves, but anytime you just keep 20 cents for yourself, they're like, oh my God, cancer, you're so selfish. If that's hitting, just like, that's a toxic behavior. See it for what it is. That's not okay. Because I feel like people are messing with you. It's a general read. Take it with a grain of salt. So if that is happening, I just feel like people are messing with you and that's not okay. Um, take it with a grain of salt, of course. Because you do look out for other people. You are helping people. You are making the situation work. You are very giving in this situation. Um, especially if people are trying to weaponize the past against you. Maybe you have had moments in the past where you had selfish moments. That's not the current energy. 
Um, I feel like everybody has those moments at one point where just maybe you do something for you and you don't really care what other people want. You do it for you. And that, like, don't let people weaponize the past against you either. I don't know. There's something about that that's like, it's triggering me. Kind of like, you know, it's almost like people like, you know what I mean? It's kind of like when you, you know, you buy dessert that you're going to share with people, but you buy the dessert you like. And maybe say, for example, you like coconut and really nobody else does, but you're like, I don't care this time I'm getting coconut. And then people are like, yeah, like when you got that coconut cake and nobody else liked it but you. And you're like, well, once in a while, we all have a moment. But just because maybe that happened three or four years ago, but people don't get to weaponize that against you. You could, Everybody has their moments once in a while. It's not that big a deal. Like, be aware of that. That's all I'm saying. Now, coming forward, there's a chance to do things differently. Your moment, your power moment is coming up. Now, victory is showing up, but there's also a plan with this victory. I'm getting, uh, there's the victory moment showing up, but there's a plan with it is what I'm getting. Your moment is coming up in the same subject. So whatever this is hitting with, if this reading is hitting so far, whatever this category is that it's hitting for, it's in the same subject, the same line, same people, you know. Your power moment is coming in. You're going to get, to, you're going to be able to do what you want. Okay. People seem to be needing you at this moment. Okay. People definitely need to be needing... People definitely need you. I feel like somebody's offering help. Somebody that you can depend on. This is your power moment coming in. All right. Now, now, this is what they're saying to do with it and not do with it. For it to work out in your benefit. Because it does seem like it's going to take a little while for this to all sort through don't don't go running back and forth trying to please everybody don't do that because i feel like there's this i feel like somebody if this reading is hitting it feels like somebody's trying to get you to run back and forth somebody's messing with you i keep feeling it um don't run back and forth trying to trying to satisfy everybody so for example say in the next coming months maybe three or four months out there's a family gathering or, fa or friends or whatever it is, a gathering with like 12 or more people just for argument's sake. And you're like, all right, I booked this place. Everybody should come. And it's kind of like, well, people are like, well, I don't, I don't want that because of the wind or I don't want that because it's too far away from this or I don't want that. Just book the place. Book the one that you think is the best for everybody. Don't get running back and forth trying to change your plans. Um, Go forward, for example, the first step would be to book the place. Book the place you think is the best for everybody. Um, don't overthink it. Realize that not everybody's going to be happy. But, like, for example, I'm thinking of, like, strategically, I would probably, like, look where everybody is most likely to be, like, maybe a half hour or less away from this place and be like, all right, this will work. I'll do this. Um... If you're choosing, for example, like if you're the one bringing the food or it's catered, go through it and just, do like I said before, choose something that you definitely like, but then choose something that you think other people are like. If you're going to let them choose, give them a like, hey, listen, you know, um, this this Tuesday I'm putting in the final order. Uh, let me know, you know, Monday night if there's anything you, you know, think. Or you like if you want to put a vote in for something, put, tell me what you want, not what you don't want. Tell me what you do want. But Monday night, I'm final. I'm I'm just gonna get it all together. And Tuesday morning, I'm calling and I'm 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 making the uh, the arrangements. If people try to like double back on you or something, or like no, don't get it from there. I get it from here. I want this from there. I got it there from there. Like, just shut it down and say, listen, it's from this place. That's where I'm getting it from. If you don't tell me what you want, I'm gonna decide for. It. I'm gonna decide for everybody myself. So it's kind of like it's gonna be all catered. We're gonna get three main dishes and we're gonna get two side dishes. Um, just for argument's sake, and you get to choose. You get to put in your vote for what you like, but you don't get to change where I'm getting it from. If you don't want to put in what you like, that's fine. I'm just going to choose what I think's the best. And keep it at that. And keep it at that. Um. Because I feel like if you let people get you running back and forth, and it's gonna don't do that. Just don't do that to yourself. Keep it moving forward. You decide where it's going to be from. For example, you give people a chance. And then if they try to like derail you, nope, we're not allowing that. I'm going to make this decision. You get to decide, you get to put in a vote, but it's just a vote. This situation also should stay in your control. All right, so 
What is going on over here? Is this a long reading? Yeah, Pisces was long too. <laughs> and Pisces had this popping up over here too in an interesting way. Um, and when I say that, the devil card shows up. Um, the devil card with the two of cups. I, just, I keep feeling it. Somebody might be, like, playing... I just feel like somebody's playing hot-cold. Um, it's almost like passive-aggressive energy around you in the sense of, like, you know, whatever you do right, they show up two things that went wrong. If you say something went wrong, they'll, they'll negate you and see, like, yeah, but you're, you're just so down in yourself. You can't celebrate your successes. You did this right. You did that right. But somebody is... I feel like somebody's manipulating you. Um... The advice here is to like go to your center and realize what's going on here. You don't want to play into it. You don't want to encourage this energy. But you might want to see somebody for how they're actually treating you. This is not okay. And I feel like this reading is trying to highlight that. Like somebody, I just feel like somebody's not treating you right. And it's like if you, if you, sell, if you try to celebrate yourself, they try to bring you down. If you, if you like go ahead and say, oh, I didn't do this right, I didn't do that right, They'll bring you up, but they'll still knock you down as they bring you up. I just keep getting this for some people. Be careful of that. Be aware of that. Help help yourself or connect with people who see the true you and see that energy where like you are doing a really good job and other people don't get to rip you down based on whatever they feel they have the right to. Keep that in mind because this situation is a success, but I keep getting like somebody keeps showing up. And when I say they're messing with you, I don't mean it like it's a funny thing. I mean it like it's it's a toxic thing. And I feel like if you can see it for what it is, you can hopefully start disconnecting from it and not letting it affect you as much. I feel like this reading is trying to highlight that. Because you're doing well. You're turning this around. That same energy might be the energy that keeps you feeling like you're on the outside. That same energy might be very toxic from you, for you. Um... This may be an energy, I'm not judging that person being bad, good, or indifferent. I'm just saying this energy might be better if they just kind of like step out of your life a bit. They might, it might be better for you and them if they just kind of distance themselves or you distance them yourself from them accordingly. Um, because I feel like the more you see it, I feel like you're going to realize that there's a lot of things that this person you have tied up, you, you, you're tied in with this person in a lot of different angles. For some reason, I almost feel like they keep themselves tied to you because they they get off messing with you. It's like, it, it's, it's a source of joy for them to make you feel bad. Take that with a grain of salt. If you see it for what it is, I feel like you'll start seeing it and you'll be like, all right, let me untie myself here. And I just feel like as you slowly untie yourself here and there and you just diminish this person's connection to you, I feel like you're going to start feeling better about this whole situation and you're going to start realizing that maybe it's time for some changes. Heads up, just a heads up on that one. Because I keep feeling like somebody's messing with you and it's not right. And the the true light that you are can't really flourish as long as this person keeps trying to dim you. It's like somebody, it's like walking into, uh, into a party with really nice clothes and somebody keeps th throwing dirt on you or keeps trying to like, you know, bump into you and getting you to bump into things so you, they mess up what you have or they damage things that you're you're doing. And it's, it's minimal things, but it's like these minimal things that keep causing damage and don't allow you to really shine as much as you can shine and don't let you be that beautiful person that you actually are. It's, it's, it's dimming you. And it's like, if we see it for what it is, you'll start addressing it for what it is. And I feel like you can heal this and really let your true light come forward so you can be happier and you can be better for not only you, but for other people around you because there's something here that I feel like is dimming your light. And I feel like that's what this whole reading is about. They're helping you see it. And they're trying to help you find a way to like change how this is going so life can be better for you. I mean, it's a general read. Take it with a grain of salt. I think we're there. All right, I'm going to shut this down here. Hope that helps. Thank you for watching. If you'd like a direct reading from me, shoot me an email, jamesforastral at gmail.com. That's james the number four, astral at gmail.com. If you're interested in the donation information, that's below. Same email. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day.